diagram and infographics pages are shown on a dark background. They provide a simple, visual reference to topics discussed. Example pages put together the topics you have learned and demonstrate how they can be applied in each. Summary pages come at the end of each chapter. They remind you of the key topics that were covered in each chapter. At work, when people look at my screen and see it full of code, it's not unusual to get a comment about it looking very complicated or how clever I must be to understand it. The truth is, it's not that hard to learn how to write web pages and read the code used to create them. You certainly don't have to be a programmer. Understanding HTML and CSS can help anyone who works with the web. Understanding HTML and CSS can help anyone who works with the web. Under Designers can create more attractive and usable sites. Website editors can create better content. Marketers can communicate with their audience more effectively. And managers can commission better sites and get the best out of their teams. I've focused on the code you need to 1. HTML We will spend the first chapter looking at how HTML is used to create web pages. You will see that you start by writing down the words you want to appear on your page. You then add tags or elements to the words so that the browser knows what is a heading, where a paragraph begins and ends, and so on. The rest of this section introduces the tags you have at your disposal to create web pages, grouped into chapters on text, lists, links, images, tables, forms, video audio and flash, and miscellaneous elements. I should warn you that the examples in the first nine chapters are not exciting to look at, yet they are the foundation of every web page. The following chapters on CSS will show you how to make your pages look a lot more interesting. To CSS we start this section with a chapter that explains how CSS uses rules to enable you to control the styling. 3. Craft ICAL We end up with some helpful information that will assist you in building better websites. We look at some new tags that will be introduced in HTML5 to help describe the structure of your pages. HTML5 is the latest version of HTML still under development at the time of writing. Before learning about these elements, you need a good grasp of how CSS is used to control the design of web pages. There is a chapter that talks you through a design process that you might like to follow when creating a new website. Finally, we end up looking at topics that will help you once you have built your site, such as putting it on the web. Search engine optimization seal and using analytic software to track who comes to your site and what they are looking at. In order to teach you about creating web pages, this book is divided into three sections. The structure of TIS book. Browsers people access websites using software called a web browser. Popular examples include Firefox, Internet Explorer, Safari, Chrome, and Opera. In order to view a web page, users might type a web address into their browser follow a link from another site, or use a bookmark. Software manufacturers regularly release new versions of browsers with new features and supporting new additions to languages. It is important, however, to remember that many computer owners will not be running the latest versions of these browsers. Therefore you cannot rely on all visitors to your site being able to use the latest functionality offered in all browsers. You will learn how to tell which browsers visitors use to access your website in Chapter 19. Web servers When you ask your browser for a web page, the request is sent across the internet to a special computer known as a web server which hosts the website. Web servers are special computers that are constantly connected to the internet and are optimized to send web pages out to people who request them. 
Some big companies run their own web servers. It is already it is too late. To use the services Say of the web company to charge a fee to host our website. Our men and our sons have joined the ranks of the stranger. They have joined these relations and they have to afford these companies. If we can try to drive off the white men in the room. It is important to remember that various devices have different screen sizes and some have faster connections to the web than others. Screen readers Screen readers are programs that read out the contents of a computer screen to a user. They are commonly used by people with visual impairments. In the same way that many countries have legislations that require public buildings to be accessible to those with disabilities. Many laws have also been passed that require websites be accessible to those with disabilities. Throughout this book you will see several references to screen readers. These notes will help ensure that the sites you create are accessible to people who use such software. In order for you to find the location of the web server, when you visit a website, the web server hosting that site could be anywhere in the world. In order for you to find the location of the web server, your browser will first connect to a domain name system DNS server. How the web W works. Paris. London. Cambridge. The unique number that the DNS server returns to your computer allows your browser to contact the web server that hosts the website you requested. A web server is a computer that is constantly connected to the web, and is set up especially to send web pages to users. The web server then sends the page you requested back to your web browser. When you connect to the web, you do so via an internet service provider ISP. You type a domain name or web address into your browser to visit a site. For example google.com bbc.co.uk microsoft.com Your computer contacts a network of servers called domain name system DNS. Servers These act like phone books, they tell your computer the IP address associated with the requested domain name. An IP address is a number of up to 12 digits separated by periods. We come across all kinds of documents every day of our lives. Newspapers, insurance forms, shop catalogs, the list goes on. Many web pages act like electronic versions of these documents. For example, newspapers show the same stories in print as they do on websites. You can apply for insurance over the web, and stores have online catalogs and e-commerce facilities. In all kinds of documents, Structure is very important in helping readers to understand the messages you are trying to convey and to navigate around the document. So, in order to learn how to write web pages, it is very important to understand how to structure documents. In this chapter you will see how HTML describes the structure of a web page. Learn how tags or elements are added to your document. Write your first web page. Think about the stories you read in a newspaper for each story. There will be a headline, some text, and possibly some images. If the article is a long piece, there may be subheadings that split the story into separate sections or quotes from those involved. Structure helps readers understand the stories in the newspaper. The structure is very similar when a news story is viewed online although it may also feature audio or video. This is illustrated on the right with, in the browser when HTML describes the structure of pages. Let's look closer at the code from the last page. There are several different elements. Each element has an opening tag and a closing tag. Code. HTML and CSS element test to describe the structure of pages. This is the main heading. This text might be an introduction to the rest of the page. And if the page is a long one, it might be split up into several subheadings. This is a subheading. Many long articles have subheadings so to help you follow the structure of what is being tag indicates that the opening 
Tag indicates that anything between it and a closing. Tag is HTML code. A. Tag indicates that anything between it and the closing. Tag should be shown inside the main browser window. Words between and our main heading. A paragraph of text appears between these. Attributes provide additional information about the content. Attributes tell us more about elements. Paragraph in English. Attribute name. Attribute value. The majority of attributes can only be used on certain elements, although a few attributes such as lang can appear on any element. Most attribute values are either predefined or follow a stipulated format. We will look at the permitted values as we introduce each new attribute. The value of the lang attribute is an abbreviated way of specifying which language is used inside the element that all browsers understand. HTML5 allows you to use uppercase attribute names and omit the quote marks, but this is not recommended. Paragraphy and from say. Attribute name. Attribute value. This is the title of the page. This is the body of the page. Anything within the body of a web page is displayed in the main browser window. Slash chapter 01 slash body head title dot html html result you met the element in the first example we created everything inside this element is shown inside the main browser window before the element you will often see it element this contains information about the page rather than information that is shown within the main part of the browser window that is highlighted in blue on the opposite page. You will usually find a element inside the element. The contents of the element are either shown in the top of the browser, above where you usually type in the URL of the page you want to visit or on the tab for that page if your browser uses tabs to allow you to view multiple pages at the same time. Body, head tip le. You may know that HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. The hypertext part refers to the fact that HTML allows you to create links that allow visitors to move from one page to another quickly and easily. A markup language allows you to annotate text and these annotations provide additional meaning to the contents of a document. If you think of a web page, we add code around the original text we want to display in the browser that HTML pages are text documents. X HTML uses tags characters that sit inside angled brackets to give the information they surround special meaning. Tags are often referred to as elements. X. Tags usually come in pairs. The opening tag denotes. X T H E start of a piece of content. The closing tag denotes the end. Opening tags can carry attributes, which tell us more. Zap out the content of that element. Attributes require a name and a value. X. To learn HTML you need to know what tags are. It's available for you to use, what they do, and where they can go. Headings and paragraphs. Xbold, italic, emphasis. X structural and semantic markup. X. Text T. 2. When creating a web page, you add tags, known as markup to the contents of the page. These tags provide extra meaning and allow browsers to show users the appropriate structure for the page. In this chapter we focus on how to add markup to the text that appears on your pages. You will learn about
You'll learn to see. That's what it's all about, actually. To learn to see. To reflect and to observe your customers. Service design, in essence, is really, really simple. You start and end up in the customer. If you look at design, over the last 70 years, design has really moved. Today we live in a very different society. The way that people are connected, the way that people are empowered. We need to rethink fundamentally how we train about it. you will do a better job. Your travel starts actually when you book your ticket. So when we did the service design here, we tracked it all the way from the beginning and all the way through the airport and you took off. There are important aspects of that whole journey on how we deliver our services here. If you really want to make your customer happy, you have to put yourself into that situation. You have to use a lot of empathy. You can't forget that airport is about saying goodbye, expectations, waiting. When we did the service design here, we were watching passengers, how they were behaving and interviewing them. I was standing in front of the arrival gate and people kept coming out and I could feel the expectations from the people standing there with me, just waiting for that exact moment when people arrive. And you don't want to miss it. It's so important with the cameras, they're ready to catch that moment. The screen that show the status of that aircraft was behind you. Everyone had to turn around and look at it, which made us all stress because you didn't want to miss that exact moment. So we just moved it. It's obvious that we have blind spots. We know what the customers, how they behave and why they behave in the way they do, but we don't. If you're going to survive in this world and you're competing with other airports, you have to run the airport efficiently. That's basic, that's expected of you. And to really compete, you have to find out what else, what you can put on top of that experience. service design is one of my favorite and probably the most asked question but I 